One of the best deals in gaming for the past year has been the Ambernic RG35XX. It took all of the best parts of the MiU Mini, made them bigger, and most importantly, made them available. The RG35XX plays anything from Game Boy all the way up to PS1 with fantastic emulation quality and great firmware options. And you get all that for around 50 bucks. Plus shipping, so more like 65 bucks. Now, almost a year later, Ambernick iterated on their bestseller with the RG35XX Plus. It's more or less the same. It's ever so slightly smaller. It has angled shoulder buttons that are easier to differentiate by feel when playing. These shoulder buttons were inspired by mods for the original RG35XX. They also moved the start and select buttons for some reason. If we're talking about cosmetic changes, everything else is more or less the same. It's an unremarkable upgrade. The rest of the upgrades are internal. A more powerful CPU-GPU combo and quadruple the RAM allows this new RG35XX Plus to play all the way up to N64, DS, and even PSP games. And just for $14 more than the original. A substantial improvement. But there are a few questions you probably already have. How are DS games gonna work on this thing if there's just one square screen? How are N64 and PSP games gonna work without an analog stick? And to that, I say, it's a $14 upgrade. Come on, guys. Seriously, there's gonna be some compromises. It's a substantial improvement, but it's certainly not for everybody. This video is sponsored by Trade Coffee. Oh, I hope that guy is not here. Oh man, I wanted to try something different. Oh, he's waving. Okay, all right. Hey, what up, big man? Yeah, hey man, how's it going? I'll take a uh, caramel macchiato, right? Everything all right? Yeah, that's good. How much? Great, that'll be 16 bucks. Oh, we only take coin. Remember coin? The failed Kickstarter coin? Why go to a coffee shop when you can just get trade delivered right to your door? Trade sources the best local roasters from across the country and brings them right to your doorstep. Trade learns about your specific coffee preferences and matches you to coffees that you will love. It's a great way to discover new coffees and also a great way to not have to leave your house and go to a coffee shop. Hey man, could I just get the bathroom? <laughs> Caramel macchiato? The, the, the bathroom coat. Oh. Beans. I make multiple coffees every single day and I've been using Trade since even before they started sponsoring me. All of the coffees have a roasting date so it helps me know that they're fresh and it also keeps me fresh by trying all different things. You can get it for yourself by clicking the link in the description below and you can get yourself a free bag with your first subscription but also it makes a good gift. All you have to do is choose how much you want to spend on the person and that'll be how many bags of coffee they get. Your recipient can even take Trade's quiz and personalize the coffee for themselves. So click the link below or go to drinktrade.com slash wolfden and get yourself a free bag with your first subscription or a gift for somebody. Hey man, can I get the Wi-Fi? Yeah, of course. Here you go. Take it. This was sent to me by KeepRetro.com. They have free shipping and Amber Nick's official website does not. So altogether, it is slightly cheaper from KeepRetro.com. And I have an affiliate link to their store in the description below should you be interested in this. But I would say watch this whole video and decide for yourself. One of the best things about the original RG35XX is the community around it. Custom firmware improved things so much and became so popular that Ambernick decided to ship units with that custom firmware installed already. And that leads us right off the bat to one of the biggest issues with the RG35XX Plus. There is currently no custom firmware out right now. It's too new. The stock experience of the RG35XX Plus is very similar to the stock experience of the original RG35XX when it first launched, which is not the best. A lot of my criticisms here are gonna be on the firmware level, and these can be easily fixed with custom firmware over time. It's just that at the time of writing, there is no custom firmware that addresses these issues. For example, you can't suspend your gameplay at all. 
If you leave the app or turn your console off, you'll lose your progress. Unless you saved, of course. All right, it does let you suspend. It only kind of lets you suspend. If I wait too long, this will die and I'll lose my progress. That alone is reason enough to consider the original RG35XX over this new revamped RG35XX Plus. That is, of course, until custom firmware gets developed. Keep an eye out for updates from Black Seraf. I'm sure he's working on some custom firmware for this. I'll also be sure to update the description of this video and also a pinned comment or something with any updates that I see. I wanna give the original stock experience of the original RG35XX a little more credit because even before the custom firmware, it had a pretty great emulation experience. The emulation quality was pretty great. It came with a bunch of games that all ran very well. It was a good candidate for a stocking stuffer for someone who just wants to play retro stuff but doesn't want to mess around too much. And this new RG35XX Plus does everything that one did just as well. SNES emulation passes the Yoshi's Island test. GBA emulation is spectacular. You'll probably get some better emulation quality out of some more modern demanding PS1 games as well, which was the peak of the original's performance. It just now also includes more powerful systems. N64, Dreamcast, PSP, and even Nintendo DS emulation. That's huge for such a small device like this. But the emulation quality just isn't all there for those systems. I was excited for the boosted performance, so I immediately jumped right into DS emulation. As you can imagine, the dual screens are not ideal for the single screen experience. But that's fine. I've had a fine time running DS and 3DS on 4x3 screens before. Pressing R2 just full screens the top screen. Lots of DS games only use the top screen, so that's fine. It's cool that the options here, even if it isn't ideal for every game. My issue is with the scaling on this screen. It looks mostly fine, but it would be nicer if there was an option to make the resolution a two times scale, because right now it's a two and a half times scale. And we're already gonna get jagged edges, it's a DS game, but now they're gonna be a little more jagged in places we don't want. And maybe even some blurriness. Mario has seen better days here. I'd rather have a slightly smaller image than a jagged one, at least give me the option. This is something that could be fixed with custom firmware eventually. But all that being said, the emulation quality seems to be pretty decent. There was no noticeable audio glitches or slowdown that I experienced in any of the games that I played. The biggest issue with DS is that there's no touchscreen on here and there's really no extra buttons to map touchscreen controls to. Drastic, the DS emulator this comes with, does not seem to have an option to toggle the D-pad to act like a cursor. You can map the D-pad to just move the cursor, but then you won't have a D-pad. This is gonna break some games that require you to touch a menu option at the start. Again, this could be fixed with custom firmware. Some PSP games like Mega Man perform surprisingly well on this device. Some audio pops here and there, but overall, I was surprised by it. However, PSP suffers from even worse scaling issues. This full screen letterboxing makes it extremely jagged. I mean, it's a PSP game, so Mega Man's gonna be jagged. There's gonna be some pixel mismatch and there's room to scale it a little better if we had a more powerful GPU. You can double the render resolution, but this doesn't seem to help much and just weighs down the GPU even more. I'm not thrilled about how PSP looks on here. And if you're gonna play any more demanding games like Gran Turismo, you're gonna have a bad time. Oh. Oh. Given the aspect ratio and resolution of this thing, and of course the performance, I'd say don't get the 35XX Plus for PSP. Consider it an added bonus. Dreamcast has the worst scaling of all. It should look fine on here, but with this stock firmware, it has to run at half resolution, which causes the text and some other textures to look terrible. Running the game at full resolution will cause what can only be described as screen ripping. So if you're gonna be playing Dreamcast, expect half resolution. It's playable, but not ideal, which seems to be a running theme here. Also, I had to manually map the D-pad to act like an analog stick. I don't know why it wasn't that way by default. What Dreamcast games would benefit by using this as a D-pad by default? 
That doesn't make much sense. The RG35XX Plus is capable of N64 games, but it didn't come with any. In fact, you'll see a bunch of games throughout this video that I might have added myself. The library that this thing came with is a little bit lacking. To add your own games, it's as simple as taking the micro SD card out of the device, popping it in your computer, and transferring your ROMs. The micro SD cards that come with these devices are usually pretty terrible. I had to transfer my larger files one at a time, or else the card would get mad at me and disconnect. If you're wondering where I get my ROMs from, all you have to do is go to a little website that rhymes with Chugul and type in the name of the game you want, ROM, and then navigate all of the weird looking download links and good luck. If you wanna get games legitimately, I do have a video on how to get games that you own physically and turn them into ROMs. N64 has some pretty bad audio crackling. The first game I always try is Perfect Dark because I like that game and it tests the limits of N64 emulation. There was some audio crackling and it was slow in a lot of places, but ran okay during actual gameplay. I do like how the R2 button by default toggles the face buttons to act like C buttons. This sounds complicated, but it's actually surprisingly intuitive to wrap your head around. If you know how to play Perfect Dark or Goldeneye already, because those controls are already pretty confusing. Mario 64 also suffers some bad audio and weird slowdown sometimes, but again, actual gameplay seemed just fine. Mario 64 is just not a great game to play with a D-pad. This isn't the best device for N64 games, but again, it's a nice added bonus that it's even capable of these games. I've been spending a lot of time crapping on the improvements that this thing has, but it's just because a lot of people see that it's capable of PSP games and they go, ooh, I want that. But if you're gonna be getting this thing for its PSP capabilities, you're gonna be disappointed. All in all, it's a $14 price difference that does open you up to a whole bunch of different game libraries and that might be worth something to you. But if you do want pretty good N64, Dreamcast, and even DS emulation, it might be worth it to spend the extra couple of bucks on something like the PAL Kitty X55. But you're gonna want to install the custom Jellos firmware on it to get some better emulation. If you want good PSP or even some light GameCube emulation, splurge for the RG405M or 405V. But don't get me wrong, the RG35XX is $100 cheaper than those two that I just mentioned. It's still a phenomenal handheld. The original RG35XX is still a contender for best retro handheld of all time, especially if all you wanna do is play GBA games. It's just $50, has great emulation quality, and comes with the best firmware right out of the box. For $14 more, you can get the new and improved 35XX Plus with some N64 Dreamcast DS and PSP emulation. It's not the best, but the option is there and that's worth something. It's worth $14 is what it's worth. But losing that custom firmware does make it a hard thing to recommend. I would hold off on getting yourself the RG35XX Plus if A, you don't want to install custom firmware yourself, or B, you don't want to wait for that custom firmware to be developed. I find it hard to recommend anything that has future promises of eventually becoming good. Even though the original cannot play N64 games, at least you can suspend your gameplay. Playing Game Boy Advance, SNES, PS1, and all that is more than enough to justify the price of the original. Although there is custom firmware you can install in the original that does let you play N64 games. Just again, not the best emulation quality. Again, I'll leave an update in the description or a pinned comment if custom firmware becomes available for the plus because that will change the whole story. Anyway, what do you guys think about the RG35XX Plus? Is it an upgrade that gives you a little bit of FOMO, some buyer's remorse, makes you wanna buy the new guy? Does it make you wanna finally pull the trigger to get one of these guys, or do you think it's just not worth it at all? Leave it in the comments below, at me on Twitter, any and all this other social media garbage. Thank you, Trade, for helping sponsor this video. Don't forget to check them out at the link in the description as well. I got streams over on twitch.tv slash Wolfden. We got a podcast called the Wolfden Podcast. You know what? The most important thing that you could do to help support this channel is just subscribe right here. 
and share this video with a friend, a friend who maybe wants to get into this handheld emulation nonsense. Thank you guys very much. Have yourself a very good week.